Welcome to The Author Show, where we feature new authors and books, from fiction to self-help and everything in between. You'll find it all at theauthorshow.com. That's theauthorshow.com. And now let the show begin. Hello and welcome back to the show. This is your host, Don McCauley. Today we're welcoming the program Dr. Glenn Losack, and he is the author of The Bonds We Share. Before I bring in today's guest, a quick reminder that selected interviews are available at our website, as well as on major platforms like Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, and many more. Glenn, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Well, I'm a board-certified psychiatrist, but I'm embedded in photography and music, traveled the world, over 50 nations, and I hope to talk a little bit about my book, The Bonds We Share. So tell us about your book. The book is a beautiful coffee table book, essentially a photo essay with over 200 photographs with short captions, and it portrays the humanity in all walks of life around the world that shows how similar we are as human beings, how we share a commonality, even though we look different, even though our cultures are different. Now, who did you write your book for specifically? Who's your target audience here? It's a photo essay book, and I would assume that anyone interested in beautiful photography and fascinated with our world's people living their daily lives, I would think that anyone over 18 would love the book. So what's the central message here? Well, the bonds we share as human beings are stronger, much, much stronger than the borders that divide us. So if you had to choose, what would you say is the single most important idea you're sharing in your book that's really going to add value to the reader's life? I would say the photography is about people in their daily lives, like you and me. Although they live their life somewhat differently and abide by different cultures, my main theme is that they are more or less similar than different. Love, religion, hope, courage, work, all are bonds that we share worldwide, especially during this catastrophic pandemic where the bonds of loss, fear, courage, and uncertainty ties in with the theme, the bonds we share. So if you were asked to compare your book with any book out there we might already be familiar with, which book would it be and why? Good question. Well, you know, Amazon itself features a book called Humans by Brandon Stanton, books by Steve McCurry, world-famous photographer. There are National Geographic image collections called women, and books by James Nachtway, who's my idol as far as photography is concerned, books that portray humanity in everyday life. So why do you shoot these subjects? I have a deep interest in the poor, the downtrodden, those who have no advocacy, who roam the world uncared for, those who have both physical and mental illnesses, and I call them invisible. So with my camera, I make them visible so that the Western world gains a better understanding, hopefully an education on 3.6 billion people. Mother Teresa said there's two kinds of poverty. One is material. People got to eat, right? But there's a deeper, much greater hunger, and that's the hunger for love and the terrible loneliness of being unwanted, unloved abandoned by everybody. And my duty as a physician is to help people, mend them. And I think that's why I shoot these subjects. So how do you incorporate practicing medicine and photographing on the other side of the world, like India and Bangladesh? For the last 30 years, I became a locum tenens doctor. It's a doctor like a temp agency. It allows me to work where, when, how long I want to work, and then I can travel. There have been years where I didn't work. There are years where I worked six months and traveled the rest of the year to all these nations that are not developed. There's a huge shortage of psychiatrists in the country, so the demand is quite big. And so I have my cake and eat it too. I take my cameras with me when I want to and when I need the money, 
got to pay the bills, right? I'm working. Now, Yoko Ono has one of your shots in her personal collection. What can you tell us about that? I took a photograph in Prague of the Lenin wall. Now, it was a picture of John Lennon on the wall, a painting. And, of course, I fell in love with it, took a picture of it. A monk was walking by, and on the photo it said, Love is a color only the blind can see. It was given to her through certain means, and she responded with such a wonderful letter of thanks, which I have on my wall. I am a Beatles fanatic, as well as a physician and photographer. So why did you decide to make photography such a big part of your life? At 15, I was in the Strand Bookstore, famous store in Manhattan. I saw Cartier-Bresson's black and white photograph called Srinagar Kashmir. That's in India. It depicts Muslim women praying on a mountaintop overlooking the Himalayas. At that moment, I knew I needed a camera and I needed to go to India. I felt an instinctual need that touched my heart and soul. At 15, I fell in love with black and white photography. I can also add that James Nachtway, Sir Don McCullen, and the Turley brothers, along with McCurry, greatly influenced my desire to shoot humans in the most dire, difficult situations. So what is it about places like India and the Dominican Republic and Bangladesh that really interests you in your photographic work? Well, India is a developing nation that has 700 plus million people earning less than $3 a day. The streets are chaotic. The walk of the humanity, people living outside in the street, not inside their house, like it cocooned. And so I'm able to shoot people doing anything and everything. I went to med school in the Dominican Republic. I returned there to shoot Haitians that live in ghettos, no electricity, no water, struggling and suffering any possible way you could imagine. Bangladesh, an overpopulated country that I love dearly, provides me with an amazing amount of photography of my subjects that I choose to show. Many beggars, people suffering from all forms of illnesses, such as leprosy, neurofibromatosis, etc. And people love getting their pictures taken, which is really important for me. So why do you have such an interest in leprosy? I was in Delhi, 1991. I saw a man without fingers, toes, no feet, no nose. He was blind. He was wheeled by a family member, a friend in a wagon asking for money. I'd never seen such a disfiguring and demoralizing scene in my life, even though I went to medical school. These unfortunate souls are in dire straits. Basically, nothing is being done for them. The media is not there. Media is more concerned with COVID and malaria than they are with a disease that makes people basically, they look disfigured and there's a cure. It's a couple of pills, three days, and they're not contagious. Their children are stigmatized. They cannot go to school with normal children. And so all of this has drawn me to the cause of leprosy, and I've donated money and my photography so Westerners can see what it is like to be a victim of Hansen's disease, a.k.a. leprosy. So what was your inspiration to write this book? Tell you, as a doctor, to help others in dire straits through visual means, at least show the world how less fortunate others are and how we take advantage of a wonderful life in the West. We feel privileged, but few feel how privileged we are. My brand is to speak to expose the Western world to the impoverished and how they get through another day via the generosity of others. With a camera in my hand, it's a powerful tool to show that. My book was curated by Apollo. The images that are hard to look at are on my Flickr site, No Holds Barred. It truly shows the dark side of humanity. But the inspiration comes from 
learning about what other photographers have shown in their work too. So did your book involve a lot of research? The research I would classify as for historical purposes. Maybe I would search the web of a certain place that I was in so that it would inform the reader, make it more interesting. But basically, we comb through thousands of images taken in several developing nations that I've taken throughout the past 35 years. So what makes your book relevant today? Well, the world's gone through a catastrophic pandemic. There's an extreme political divisiveness, violence in each city's bigotry, rampant in our nation. I think the bonds we share showcases that we are really more alike than different. We're bonded with love and that if we could just see that, our belief in God, family, no matter who we are, what we look like, we should know that the bonds are stronger than the differences that we have. And I think that needs to be said and can help society. Hey, we're all human. Why are we doing this to each other? So have you had any feedback yet from readers? Amazon has wonderful reviews so far, and I think the book has sold pretty well so far, crossing my fingers, of course. So what's been your most rewarding experience since publishing your book? First of all, getting the book published. Getting a photo book published today is extremely difficult. Having a book allow me to get interviews, podcasts, TV shows, radio shows, which are all rewarding experiences and hopefully expose the book to a wider audience, which has happened. So what part of your book would you say you personally like best? I can't really specify which ones. I love all the images. I mean, I was part and parcel of picking them out. It's, I think I'm not partial to anyone, honestly speaking. So in your opinion, who should buy your book? Anyone interested in gaining a more intimate look at humanity, a better understanding how we share bonds together as a human race, and of course, people that love beautiful, gorgeous coffee table books with brilliant photos. Do you have a website? Many. The main one is Flickr and Linktree. Now, very simply, People can just Google Glenn Losack. I think that Flickr will come up and other sites will come up. But all my work that I work on daily is at Flickr, F-L-I-C-K-R. And could you spell your name for us, please? G-L-E-N-N-L-O-S-A-C-K. Well, this has been just great. Our guest today has been Dr. Glenn Losack, and he is the author of The Bonds We Share. Glenn, thanks very much for being with us today. Thank you, Don, for having me. This has been a wonderful experience. I appreciate it. This is Don McCauley wrapping up another edition of The Author Show. Go out there, buy the book today, and please share this interview with your friends so that they, too, have the opportunity to discover our guests and their work. The Author Show can be accessed at any time at theauthorshow.com. And whether you're an author who would like to be featured or a reader in search of new books to read, The Author Show is a great place to start. Check us daily as we continue to introduce wonderful authors of very interesting books on The Author Show. Thanks for listening to The Author Show. Find out more about authors and their work at theauthorsshow.com. Theauthorsshow.com. Tune in next time to another great author on The Author Show.